Well, Chris, uh, the very fact we're having this conversation through computer screens again tells us, you know, where we are. What is the situation with with COVID at, at Middlesbrough right now? Same as it is uh, every every football club up and down the country. Really, very very concerning time for everyone. So, um, uh, obviously, we've we're governed by EFL um, guidelines, um, and we've had um, directors off them already. Um, I believe pre me coming here um, that uh, you know the record at the football club was was extremely good, um, very very proactive in terms of what we what we did, uh, keeping the cases particularly uh, low um, through through that period and getting through the period as we all had to do at that at the respective clubs at, at, at the times, but. Uh, yeah, we're on it. We're on it. Uh, we've got to be smart. We've got to be aware. Um, obviously, the the health of of, of, of everybody is the uh, is is the biggest factor in all this. Um, but personally, and from a football club, we want to keep going and work through this period. Um, have we been affected? We've had a couple of cases, um, so. You know, uh, for me, um, you know, we're 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 happy with with the the protocols that we've 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 put in place. Considering obviously, especially in the the top two divisions, there's a lot of games being called off. You know, in the Championship and in the Premier League uh, over the last sort of seven days uh, through outbreaks. So um, we're very mindful of the fact that uh, we wanna we wanna make sure that uh, those outbreaks don't happen here at Middlesbrough. Those couple of cases you're talking about, are they players, coaching staff, or, or what? Uh, uh, one coaching staff and two players. So uh, one's for three weeks ago, um, and one's um, over the last seven days. Uh, so, um, you know, I think that compared to, uh, to, to, to the clubs in the top two divisions is... Is uh, is good going and shows that uh, you know what we're trying to do here. Um, you know, keeping ourselves in the bubble, um, doing everything we can do to to uh, to keep um, the cases through the staff, obviously as well as the, as the players to an absolute minimum. Thomas Frank, I'm sure you're aware. Yesterday, the Bradford manager was saying that he he would like to see a, a temporary, a short suspension of, of of football to try and break the chain, if that is possible. Is, is that an idea you you suppose? No, no, no. Um, uh, I I, I want to keep going. Um, I think it's important that we that we that we do. Um, that's just my personal personal opinion, um, but. Uh, you know, from from the football club's point of view, you know, I've not been told from above. I'll take my lead on, on uh, on the on on uh, on or from the owner, uh, Steve Gibson and, and and Neil Bowser. What what we want to do as as a football club, but as far as I'm concerned, it's business as usual, and um, and we're preparing for the game on on on, on Saturday. So uh, we've not been informed that the games. In, uh, in danger um, and obviously it takes two teams to, to play that game so uh, I should imagine the situation at, at Bournemouth is similar to the one here and uh, you know obviously we've got a lot more information um, after being through that period of what was it 18 months 12 to 18 months was it I don't know I can't remember really it's that far back it feels like it's never stopped yeah it feels like it never stopped but really in terms of <clears throat> Supporters not being in, inside the grounds, so um, you know we're going we're going on the uh, on on the information um, that, uh, that that we've received. We're going to keep going, and uh, I believe that at this particular moment it's the right thing to do. Well, let's look at tomorrow's game then. Obviously, Bournemouth um, coming to the Riverside, best away record in the division. Both have stumbled a bit in recent weeks, so a bit of a chance there for you. We're always going to prepare, Mark, as if you know they're bringing their their A game to the Riverside. We have to do that, you know. Um, form temporary, uh, that saying, and, and class permanent. You know, I think if you look through their group, um, it's, it's certainly uh, a, a group that uh, 
that is and is expected to challenge at the top of the division, which they have done um, for 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 the season up to now. Uh, the players that they've got, uh, the players that uh, that they've kept from the Premier League, the players that they've added over over the last uh, uh, 15, 16 months, um, and the position in the table. Um, I, I, I've said, you know, even before I came, uh, when I came in and people were asking me about, you know, what do you think regarding the division? Um, I believe that Bournemouth would be definitely challenging to get out of the division and, uh, and nothing really changes my view just because of, uh, of maybe... Uh, a, a dip in dip in results. Um, you know, listen, anything can can happen. They were the the dominant team against Blackburn. Um, they went to Fulham, top of the table clash, and were one 0 up until late on in the game. So, you know, you can look at stuff and you can look at current form and, and, and results. But you know, they've got some really good players. I think they'll have a couple of players back that have been missing as well. So, um, yeah, we we believe last week was. Our toughest game so far in my tenure here, and uh, and obviously it goes without saying. Now we move on uh, to, to to Bournemouth at home uh, 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 Riverside, and uh, a real challenge and a big test for us. We were speaking to Duncan Watmore yesterday, and, and he was just saying how good your arrival at the club's been for him. I mean, you've picked him every game, and and you've. He would say that though, Mark, wouldn't he? He's not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> if you pick me every game. I'm yeah. <laughs> You know, he, he was talking about how you've, you've converted him or, or are converting him to an out-and-out out centre-forward, which is something he hasn't done before. So what is it you see in him makes you think he can do that job? Well, I mean, the, 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 the front two, when I walked through the door, were, 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 were Duncan and Andy. So, you know, um, and I think, you know, on, 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 on current form, um, you know, they've, they've, they've done well enough. Obviously, Duncan's got a couple of goals in there uh, in, in my period here. Andy's... Not got off the mark in my period here, but uh, you know we've we've played okay, okay to well in the majority of games. Like a little bit more out of everybody, like a little bit more out the front too. But you know Duncan's got certain attributes that 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 suit our play. He's mobile, his work ethic is fabulous, and uh, we've got to get him into positions where where hopefully he can score. Because um, you know I thought we we were we were okay to decent last week. Uh, the final bit. Obviously, he's the most difficult bit and one that we couldn't find uh, last week. A um, lot of possession, uh, dominated the ball for an away side. I thought the performance was really good, but you know we don't want to just do that. Um, we want that end bit as well, and that comes from everybody. And uh, and we couldn't find that pass. Well, we found one, but uh, <laughs> I think we've done the video analysis this week and, and we showed that, so I don't think I did any favours to dunk there. Um, but he, you know he's a he's a he's a big boy, he's a mature guy, uh, and he's an intelligent boy. Um, I know those boys have have got to link the play up and got to do a lot of things well for us out of possession and in possession, and uh, and hopefully we can keep creating those chances. How's Matt Crooks? Because obviously he limped off at Stoke. We're fingers crossed that um, that he'll be okay for the weekend. So um, yeah, that's good news for us. Because uh, crooksy has been a big player. I don't think he had his best game last week, and uh, and obviously him coming off the park uh, with 20, 25 minutes to go. Um, you know, we, we had to have a have a reshuffle a little bit and move a couple of players about. But these things happen. But you know, fingers crossed, it's not serious, and um, and hopefully he'll be available. Just a, a last one from me, Bournemouth. I mean, you talked about the strength of the squad. One player they, they can't call on is somebody you know very well in David Brooks from your time together at Sheffield United, who's obviously dealing with cancer. Um, just tell us about David, your relationship with him, because I, I remember a game that, that where you beat Borough at Bramall Lane, where he was he was unplayable on the night. Yeah, I mean, he's a young player that came came through um, came through the uh, the sort of the back end of the system at, uh, at Sheffield United and. Uh, he burst into the scene and he was fabulous, fabulous guy to work with, a uh, really humble boy, um, hard working and uh, incredible talent and obviously got his got his move to the Premier League and um, you know, made a real impact um early on in the in, in, in the Premier League, suffered a couple of injuries, um, which didn't help his his progression. But obviously there was talk at the time when he was at Bournemouth, you know, a lot of the you know, the Liverpools and the Arsenals and and the real superpowers of, of of English football were looking at him, and that was 
because what he's producing uh, at, uh, at Bournemouth in the Premier League and what he'd what he'd done uh, at Sheffield United and and obviously burst onto the scene uh, for for Wales as well. So you know it's you know it's really really disappointing for for, for, for David and 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 obviously um, a real setback in his in his, in his career and his, and his life, but. Um, you know he's got a great character. He's got good people around him. Uh, he's got a good club around him as well. Um, you know, yeah, we've 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 been in contact. Myself, I've been in contact. Obviously, uh, Alan has been in contact with him as well. So um, he's he's got a lot of you know he's a good guy. So he's a lot of people looking out for him and wishing him the best of luck. And um, I think the Ola football wants him to return. And uh, and hopefully, first and foremost, he 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 is is. Uh, he gets healthy again as, as soon as possible, but it's going to be uh, a long battle for him. But certainly a boy that is uh, that is has got the character uh, to um, to come through this um, disappointing part of his part of his life. Okay, thank you. Good luck tomorrow. Cheers, Mark. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Lee, Lee's on the right hand side. Then. Hey, Lee. Morning, Chris. How are you doing? Not bad, thank you. Good, good. Just back to the COVID thing, there's, there's been a few managers this week talking about the look at the vaccination status of players ahead of January and can, you know put that into consideration when making signings. I think Eddie Howe was one of them. Is that something that's that's crossed your mind ahead of January? I think we look, we, we look at uh, all, 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 all different things. You know, we, we've already had a <coughs> chat with the players. You know, this is a democracy. I totally understand that. And people have got an opportunity to make their own decisions for me. Along the lines of what the Liverpool manager said, that's that's my stance on it, and um, uh, that's 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 my take on it. For, uh, from 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 me being a football man to the experts in uh, of their field, um, from a medical and scientific department, you know, um, trusting um, what they're doing, but understanding as well. So, yeah, I'm quite I'm um, I'm quite strong. Uh, and I have been in terms of speaking to the players, but understanding, you know, we had a meeting yesterday. Um, and for me, you know, I, I, I'm double jabbed and got a booster. And, and not only am I, I believe I'm protecting myself, I'm protecting people around me as well. So um, so that's that's my stance on it. But understanding as well, you know, that the human beings and they've got a, their own thought process um, and they have to ultimately make that decision. Um, in terms of January, um, yeah, you, you, you do in an ideal world um, uh, well, want people, players to, to, to be double jabbed and uh, and have the have the booster. Uh, but um, you know, I think we got all on in terms of getting good players into the football club. And I suppose you know, I, when I'm speaking to these players, which we, we we're starting to, or speaking to the clubs, uh, it's quite difficult for me to, you know, talk about where they might play and what might be the, uh, the the sort of advantages of coming to a fabulous football club that that we work for. Uh, and by the way, uh, are you double jabbed and have you had a booster? <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, we we just might be in that situation. Let's, let's see if we can get them over the line first. No, it's good. Obviously, the Riverside has played its part at the moment, isn't yeah. it? With you know, scores of people coming in for their jobs. It's good to hear that it's kind of an open dialogue between you and the squad and the other members of staff as well. Is that something you've gone out of your way to to have so people can be comfortable talking about it? Yeah, they've got to be. You know, they've, that's uh, that's certainly the case. Uh, you know, I want to know what they're feeling. Um, you know, there's a. Uh, I think I've read today is what seventy five percent of AFL footballers double jabbed, uh, intending to get jabbed or have a, a single single jab. So we're on the way. We're 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 we're, we're on um, uh, on a good pathway. Um, I think the, the the you know the biggest one as well is there's a there's a there's a there's a stat regarding the heart situation as well. You know people that have that have had the um, had the vaccine and the booster as well. You know, there's a situation from from that point of view. So it's not scaremongering, but these these are facts, uh, and uh, in you know, it's certainly something that we've talked about to the for the to the players because you know that the human beings there are human beings as well, and we want them to be healthy and want them to to make sure that they've got the right information and as much information as possible, and over to them uh, to to them make their their own choice. I've had the right information. I've had, I've got as much information personally as possible, and and I've made that choice, and I, I believe that's the right one. 
And finally, for me, just one on Paddy McNair. He's been a key player for you, hasn't he, so far since you've arrived. Um, talk this week about interest in him in January. What can you tell us about that? Is he someone that you're looking to very much, you know, fight hard to keep hold of? <clears throat> Don't have to fight hard to keep hold of, really. He's, he's, he's our player. He understands um, where we're trying to get to. Um, <clears throat> good players will always have interest uh, in, in in them, and, and, and especially this time of the season. Uh, coming into January, a lot of speculation, but until I get a phone call, which I haven't, you know, um, everybody's here and, um, and and fighting towards getting into the team and, and producing good performances and hopefully getting good results for the football club. Listen, I just want to follow up on the on the COVID thing. I appreciate what you're saying that we live in a democracy, but does it shock you when the EFL have come out and said that 25% of all players haven't had a single jab yet? That's a quarter of all all the leagues. Yeah, it does. Yeah, um, I, you know, as I said, I'm in I'm in the camp of of the Liverpool manager, um, but um, maybe you know uh, the EFL might need to do a, a little bit more to promote to promote the uh, the advantages of of uh, of having uh, the the uh, the vaccination and, and 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 the booster. I really can't do anything about that. Um, I, I, you know, we have players uh, that that aren't, uh, haven't been double jabbed and haven't had the booster, so we have to accept that. Um, but there's enough information that goes into these players to educate them, um, and then it's over to them. Um, but we are very much pro getting jabbed um, to 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 protect themselves. And obviously, people around them and people they come into contact with. Uh, you know, let's take the let's take the you know even even the football side out of it. The first and foremost is is the advantages that it gives you from a health point of view. Uh, and you know, I I you know uh, Mike Allen, who's our video analysis, I've I've seen firsthand what he can do. You know, he was absolutely wiped out for 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 four or five months. Um, uh, he'll say he was fit and healthy. He's possibly a little bit overweight, like we all are. But um, uh, you know, he was uh, he was completely wiped out. Uh, so I've seen that first and what he did to him. So from you know, not even from a you know, uh, it going through the camp or or postponement of fixtures or or, or whatever that it can do. Uh, first and foremost, from a health point of view, you know how it protects themselves um, and and the people around them. Do you do you find that frustrating? You know, when you see the impact that, that that isolation and COVID can have on a squad, you've only got a certain amount of players to pick from. Does it frustrate you that that players aren't just getting it done so they can play football if nothing else? Definitely, yeah, it does. Uh, it, it 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 does. So that's my honest view on it. Um, I, I I'd love to be in a situation uh, of. You know everybody um, that has been um, double jabbed and booster, like the situation at Wolves, like I should imagine, close to the situation at, at, at Liverpool as well. Um, so I, I, you know that would be, you know, an ideal situation for me that um, that we all bought into it. But as you as you as you as you know, and as I've talked about before, you know. Um, um, you can lead a horse to water and all stuff like that, and uh, and you can give them as much information as possible. But ultimately, it's um, it's their it's their um, their option or their decision. So just just last one for me. Obviously, um, you know it looks as if you're starting to find that that little bit of consistency now. Some good good results of late. Do you have to beat the likes of Bournemouth to really stand a chance of making the playoffs? Do you think? No, our, our season isn't decided on on Saturday, but I do believe we're ready for a big win. Um, we talked to the players about that. I, I believe they've got a big performance in them, um, and obviously, if they if they can produce a big performance, which is needed to beat the likes of Bournemouth, then uh, then we'll get get the result that we're all after. But it'll take a, a, a huge performance for us because uh, they're up there for for a reason, uh, regardless of what's happened recently. Um, you know, the, and and the players that they've got, the players that are coming back into the group, um, seen them at the start of the season. 
Um, you know, I've seen them through the season, the analysis we've got on them as well. You know, um, especially at the top of the pitch, some, some really good quality at the top of the pitch. Centre forward that's got what over 15, 15, 20 goals so far. Solanke is it? So, so you know, they're definitely creating chances uh, and uh, a really good all round team that. Uh, as we talked about, you know the advantages of of uh, of the relegated teams or recently relegated teams going back up is is huge, and uh, for for uh, for for us, uh, in my opinion, uh, for me, uh, you know they they will be expected to 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 really mount a a huge promotion push, and they're doing that um, uh, right right at this moment as we as we speak. And it's for us to uh, to get result for 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 ourselves and our supporters. Um, but it's going to be I think it's going to be a good game because I think you've seen how we play. Um, their away, their away, away record is really solid. Um, so I think that uh, you know there'll be two teams going out all out for a win to uh, tomorrow tomorrow lunchtime. And um, and it's a game that I'm looking forward to watching my team and see how they. Put, see how they produce and perform against a, a top side in the division. Certainly a, a great early Christmas present for, for you and the supporters if you were to, to do it. Yeah, um, we don't really do Christmas, but uh, yeah, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, a result, three points, um, as I said, um, big performance needed, big atmosphere needed, which I'm sure we'll get, and, um, and hopefully we can uh, send everybody happy. Uh, everybody home happy with uh, with a, a really positive result. I feel we can get that result, but we've got to do a lot of things right tomorrow afternoon to to, to do that. Brilliant, Chris. Thank Cheers, you, Chris. Cheers, mate. Uh, we've got Matty, who's bottom left. Hey, mate. Morning, Chris. How are you? I'm not bad, mate. You? Good stuff. I'm all, I'm all good, thank you. Um, spoke uh, spoke to Duncan Watmore yesterday, and he was talking about you know the early kickoff, maybe you know. Having some advantages to it, you know, putting some pressure on the teams. I know it doesn't really give much of an incentive, but is it something that you're aware of at all? Is it something you keep in mind? Or? We've got the advantage because we're playing at home. We've got the advantage that we don't have to uh, uh, travel big distances. But I should imagine that Bournemouth will be flying up, so you know they're not going to be stuck on the motorway for seven or eight hours um, like we used to have to do um, wherever we, we, we were playing in the, in the day. So. Uh, you know, this this the the game's moved on too much now um, for there to be that much of an advantage. Um, we've just got to use the advantage of we're going to have hopefully you know twenty thousand of our supporters, twenty thousand plus of our supporters, you know, roaring us on to hopefully get a big result. And we talked about it in the week that you know we've had some decent results, you know, good result at Huddersfield, good result last week. Can we go and produce a big performance and get that big result as well against? You know, one of one of the top teams in the division for me, Bournemouth and Fulham, the outstanding teams in the division so far. Um, the results and the performances as well. Um, and you know, I won't be surprised if uh, you know uh, they will still be there come April May. Uh, but they're, they're there as as they they, they know, and I've been in a position as as well that they'd be there to shot at, be shot at, and. You know we're we're the ones that uh, will 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 uh, will be going for them. But the reason that they're at the top of the division is because of the qualities so far that they've shown in terms of handling that pressure and um, and, and picking up the results that have gone to the position. Uh, a couple of knocks to contend with after Stoke last week. I think it was Isaiah Jones, Duncan Watmore. Obviously, you, you brought off early. Are they are they okay? For... All okay. All okay to to, to go. So um, yeah, we we we. we uh, We've uh, we're not really waiting on anybody, um, so that's been you know uh, good news in in obviously a, a disappointing week for everybody. And in, and in terms of you know your progress with with Middlesbrough as things stands, I think it's just a, a month and ten days or so. Where do you where do you stand from you know your, your first day at the club to to now? Yeah, we just want to keep it moving forward in a lot of things, you know, a lot of things off the pitch that need to be dealt with, you know, things on the pitch, on the training ground that need to be dealt with as well. So, you know, it's 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 a 24-7 operation, you know, we're trying to affect all the football club 
in, in and putting our stamp on it and and our view and our opinion on 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 what we need to do to to, to make it better um, and to improve it and keep moving forward. It's far too early, you know, <clears throat> after a month to to say we're exactly where we are, but we like to think, you know, we're, we're, we're moving it forward in terms of performances, in terms of results, in terms of a little bit of the culture around the place as well, um, um, in terms of what we're looking for and how, I've, I've said it and, I, and, and I, I've said it before and I, I will continue to say it, I think it's quite a decent sort of statement to, to, to go on how we really want it to look like. So. Yeah, it's moving in in the right direction. Some days, you know, you take a couple of steps forward, and you, then you have to take a step back. Um, things happen in football clubs that you're not really too happy about. Um, you try to affect them, and then it's something that maybe you don't have to affect going forward. Have you found yourself burning the midnight oil a couple of times? Because clearly, you're big on work ethic, and you're not afraid to, you know, put an honest hard day's work. So you found yourself burning the midnight oil at times. Yeah. I, I, we're we're in early and we leave late. I mean, um, so um, that's I think that's uh, that's a, a situation that's uh, arose because of the amount of work that we think we need, we need to do in in an ideal world. I don't, you know, managers don't need to come in at when they've got it all sorted. They don't need to come in at seven o'clock and leave at, at half eight nine o'clock. You know, I never used to get that because. Um, well, I didn't because I don't, you know, you sat around having a coffee and waiting for people to come in, you know, at this particular moment, there's so much to go through, then you're working your way through. So it might not be half seven, it might not be seven, it might be half seven, it might be half seven, it might be eight. It might come to a stage where I might have to come in at, 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 at half eight, nine o'clock. But um, that's, that's, that's how it is. Um, and loving it, loving life at... Uh, at Middlesbrough, working at a really good club, as I've said, and uh, and, and trying to just get through uh, a lot of work and uh, and do it in the, in the shortest possible time. Just just find the um, the festive period, obviously after Bournemouth. How does that week in the build up to uh, to Boxing Day look like for for you and the rest of the squad? Yeah, it's full on. Um, players are in Christmas Day, so uh, we're working Christmas Day. Um, big game Boxing Day against Forest. Um, quick turnaround to Blackpool and then into the into the new year so and then you know we, we, we're talking about hopefully from a personal point of view helping to get players over the line medicals uh, working on players getting out uh, getting players out working on getting players in and then a, a big FA Cup tie at, at Mansfield so it's uh, fully expected it to be and it is it's full on and um, and, and this is the reason that we're in this game. This is the understanding of the fixture list and um, um, and and the games that come thick and fast. And, and now we have to work through that period to prepare them in the, in the best possible way. It's a pleasure as always, Chris. Cheers, mate. Take care, pal. Yeah, That's just uh, Craig. Who's hey, Craig. Morning, Chris. Um, yeah, just picking up on that, Chris. I mean, you mentioned not much of a Christmas very full on. I mean. Do you feel like they're just the sacrifices you have to make when you're in football? I had to make them when I was 16, uh, Craig, when I was an apprentice at Southampton. Um, and I've had to make them right the way through personally, through through my career. So, you know, um, working when, when other people weren't, you know, when other people were enjoying themselves. Um, so, but, you know, for me, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't change. Wouldn't change a thing. I'm taking what the experiences that I've had, um, and, uh, and and making the sacrifices for the advantages and and the enjoyment and pleasure that I get out of working, working in football and working at a, a really good football club. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's been talks for many years about kind of window breaks and things like that. That's not something you'd ever want. Then. Do you know what? Honestly, this is, you know. For me, uh, I do get quite annoyed when people talk about B teams and let's do what they're doing. Let's have a look at what we do and how good we do it uh, and how good the football pyramid is from, you know, 92 
including the Premier League, you know, uh, 72 EFL clubs, 20 Premier League clubs, non-league clubs that are, that are full-time, non-league clubs that, that are close to full-time, the amount of work that people do at non-league level, at grassroots level, right the way through. Why aren't we looking at what we do and knowing what how much football means to, to us over the festive period and how good it is going to a game on Boxing Day and how good it is travelling away to Blackpool and how, you know how many supporters we, we're going to take to Blackpool and then we, 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 how many supporters we sold out for, 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 for the Sheffield United game. What about looking at that? What about looking at, you know, why are we talking about B teams? Why are we bothered about B teams? How disrespectful that is to all the other clubs in the pyramid. Uh, why should we look after? Why should we look after the big clubs? You know, this is a unique pyramid. This is a u. This is something that's been going on for what? <sighs> Most majority of clubs, what? Uh, late, late eighteen, eighteen eighties, eighteen nineties, nineteen hundreds. 140 years. I don't know how long the football league's been going. 130 years, 140 years. Yeah, don't ask me to do the maths. FA cups or whatever cup competitions. Uh, so that's where that's where I'm at with all that. Yeah, no, brilliant. Yeah, um, just going back to something you mentioned before, Chris. Uh, you mentioned you were talking a bit about Andres Barra, the fact that you know, he hasn't scored a goal under you yet. But yeah, I just wondered how you've found working with him so far, and you know how his overall contributions been. Yeah, he's been part of a team that's that's played okay to well in the majority of, of, of games. So we're trying to squeeze a little bit more out of everybody. Um, so Andy knows that, but he's you know he's a talented footballer. His CV backs that up. Um, he has scored goals. Um, I think he might be a bit disappointed in the, some opportunities that he, he's that he's possibly not taken. Um, but it's up to everybody to, to to chip in, and it's up to us to create as well. So um, you know that final bit is is usually the hardest bit. Um, so to go from dominating the ball to making sure that we have opportunities, we get into the final third, we get into their box. Um, you know, we we create chances is 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 the toughest bit. Uh, but I think from a stats point of view, we've you know we've had, we've had enough uh, territorial possession as well as. You know, not just possession between centre halves. You know, in terms of there's different ways of looking at the stats. You know, whereabouts have you had the majority of the ball? And I'm quite happy in terms of where we've had that majority. It's just finding that last little bit. So uh, up to the likes of, you know, Mark Bowler, Jonah, Tav, Crooksy, Johnny Alson. Not always on Duncan and uh, and and Ande, but the work ethic ethic has been really good. The play at times has been really good. Um, and uh, and Andy's a, a a player who's here for the rest of the season, and uh, and he's definitely going to be a big player for us if we want to kick on into the new year. Yeah, and, and obviously strikers, you know, the thrive on goals. I appreciate the contribute in other ways, but the thrive on goals, don't there? And you know, how is he in terms of you know mentally with the fact that he hasn't scored for a few games now? Yeah, he's he's a tough boy, Eastern European boy. So you know, he's you know, he's not got a silver spoon in his in his mouth so he'll, he'll have you know they've gone through these periods as well um so his upbringing is good he's played for some big clubs as well so he understands the pressure so as long as it doesn't affect his general play overall play which i don't think it is um you know his play's been decent um but yeah combining good play combining the work ethic in terms of the first press um, and then obviously the other bits in terms of possession, but of course that last little bit and uh, him sticking the ball out in the back of the net is something that he's here to do, and um, and hopefully he can do that on Saturday starting. Yeah, just uh, just lastly from me, Chris, this week there's been um, a bit of talk about um, Borough's players who are out on loan, one specifically Jed Spence. But I just wondered if uh, you know, had you had a chance to kind of speak to either any of those players or their representatives yet? Have you made any kind of decisions on those players out on loan? Yeah, I've made contact with Jed, so I've spoke to I've spoke to Jed and uh, and had an initial con contact with him. So um, 
you know, he's uh, he's a player that's done very very well at uh, a, a, a rival, uh, a, 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 a strong and powerful club in the in the, in the division. So, uh, yeah, well, you know, we've obviously um, we we're talking and we we're, we're working away. Um, so, um, no really decision has been made on that just yet. Uh, but as always, we've got to make sure that you know. The football club is 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 the main thing that we look after. Um, nobody does you any favours in this game, Craig. You know we all we all understand that, but this it's quite a complex situation with Jed as well. It's not it's not a straightforward one. We have to make we have to make sure we we make the right decision, and we're part of that decision making and uh, and the right decision, uh, not only for the boy uh, but for but but for Middlesbrough Football Club. So uh, and we'll make that in in our time.